So I'm here to talk about uh, building enterprise uh, applications using uh, Apache Cordova and SAP OpenUI 5. So who am I? My name is Pedro Vidigal. I currently I'm a Cassandra consultant at Pythian. But uh, actually, my I've be, formerly I was working in uh, eight or nine years as an SAP consultant. So I came from the dark side <laughs> to the open source world. So I was I worked mainly in um, I had a lot a, a lot of experience with uh, international clients, uh, Europe, uh, US, also Asia. Um, so, uh, so let's start, and I, I will start talking about uh, OpenUI 5. I, uh, has anyone had uh, an experience with SAP? The no. The so basically the SAP is. Um, uh, one of the leading ERP systems, a uh, German one. And while it is very, very robust and basically offers, you can integrate every single feature of a company inside it, uh, from the finance to human resources, logistics, material management, etc., etc., etc. It has a uh, a big flaw that most people don't actually like to use it because the the user interface from SAP was frozen in time since the the beginning of the 90s let's say and so no one no one really really likes to use it uh, SAP tried several approaches SAP is uh, most of they tried several approaches with the uh, with the uh, interfaces, but they were using mostly uh, closed source uh, solutions. So this is their Netweaver, which you have to install in your PC, and it only actually it works in uh, in uh, Windows kind of well. But if you go if you're using Linux or uh, Mac OS, it works pretty badly because you have to install it using Java and it's, it's a mess. In, particularly if you are a developer, you, it's very, very, very bad. And so they tried several approaches uh, uh, using uh, web interfaces, but all proprietary. They started with a, a technology that was called BSP. It was based in Java. And then they, it didn't have a lot of traction, and they tried another one, which was called WebDimpro. It's basically the layouts are very similar to the ones that you see here, but except it's, uh, it's in, uh, in the web. And the back end is in uh, ABAP. And I don't know if you know the language. It's, uh, ABAP is a, it's a SAP's uh, own uh, language. And it's based from uh, COBOL. So while well, it's a COBOL with a not frozen in time. So uh, they tried several approaches, and none of them actually worked. And so they, uh, some years ago, they, come, they came up with, uh, with uh, this. With, uh, actually, it started not as open, SAP OpenUI 5. It's, it was called SAP U, UI 5, which still exists. And that one is, is a closed source. And uh, after the, it, it's, this is basically it's a, a, f a web framework, which is based in uh, JavaScript, uh, HTML5, and CSS3. And the developers, they really enjoyed it. And so they pushed SAP to, to release the code. Uh, in 2005, the, the framework won a, a Red Dot Design Awards. So this is a really good uh, framework if you want to build uh, enterprise applications, because you have already a lot of components 
uh, pre-made, so you don't lose time building stuff that uh, they already it's it's already done. So, and so what it is again, it's a JavaScript UI library. It has a huge number of UI controls, and I, I will show you a, a little bit later. So it's a model view controller. Uh, it's the it has data binding with the back end, so it's pretty easy to connect with the SAP, it's obvious. So you connect it with OData, but actually you can use any back end you want. Uh, the project I did, I, I, one of the project, the latest project I did that I actually won up, uh, and I be, actually I'm from Portugal, again, and I, the project that, the, that my company did, I was working in a cons Portuguese consulting company called Prosensus, and we won a, an Iberian Prize for, from Sage, which is another ERP system from, based in England, which has a lot of traction in Europe. And we, we were op using OpenUI 5, and the backend was Sage. So, it's enterprise grade, so since it's built, the, 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 this is built from SAP, it's very, very robust. It's, it doesn't have a lot of errors. And it works very well in the current browsers and every single touch device. Also, it's, it's a responsive design, as, as it should be nowadays. And now it's open source. It started as a project Phoenix. And then they change the when they change it to open UI5, and that's why you in the symbol you still see uh, the Phoenix. So which companies are using this? You can see that a lot of companies are using open UI5. Uh, of, of course, SAP, but you have a lot of big companies that are using this. So again, you can build a an application very fast, and you don't have to spend time uh, bothering about which devices you are dealing with. So here's some of the documentation for, for the, the framework, if you are interested. And so, as, as I said again, this is a built by SAP, so it's very, very good quality. Uh, it supports internationalization, also right to left, which is important for, for Arabic countries. Uh, accessibility, so you, if somehow if you can see right, it it's works very well as well. It has teams to support it. It's extensive, ex you can extend it and also, uh, you can the theming. So basically, you can build an application, and actually, when you build an application for a client, usually you do want to change the the templates to fit the the needs of the of the client. You have a lot of pre pre existing uh, templates, and you can also you can the SAP also provides a a theme designer, so you can change the, the themes very, very, very easily. So you have a, here some examples of the different themes that you can use. Again, and I will show you some of the applications that you could do with uh, OpenUI 5. So let me. Let me see if I can open it. So uh, SAP, they already have a lot of uh, applications that are done and that, that you can use. 
So they range from several HR, CRM, retail, travel and expenses, logistics, as I said. You have a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of things that you can do. So, for example, I can show you some. Uh, this is the, the good thing. The good thing about uh, Open UI Five. You already have a lot of a, a lot of applications that you can use. You can base your own applications on these ones. So, and so basically, this saves a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of developing. Uh, time. This is uh, also this is responsive. So, if I if I change the the layout, maybe this one is not the good example. Let me check. So actually, none of these examples are very good for the responsive layouts. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a. I, 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 I would, I wanted to show you the the application that I did, but unfortunately, I do have signed some DM. Uh, I cannot, I cannot show you the the application because of the the some NDAs that we had to ch to sign. Um, so continuing, so what, what, um, uh, of course, when you're building with a, with a web, uh, a web, app, a web framework, you're never going to get the performance you get from a, from a standard application. And so there are some things that you have to, to when you're developing a, uh, an open UI 5 applications that you have to take into account. And most of them are common sense, I, I would say. So uh, you should, for example, you should, it's very easy to get the styling wrong. So you should avoid hard coding, uh, the CSS and just use the the, the theming engine that uh, the framework provides. Uh, you should as well. Uh, you should when you're dealing with the controls. You should use the the, the controls functions to to manipulate it and not mess with the with the CSS. Uh, one of the common issues, like again, this is really, really common sense, but it's sometimes it, you do happen to see it that since you have the, the themes, some, sometimes the developers say, okay, I'm not getting what I want from this uh, parameter. And so they would use a different parameter for that particular, that would suit them for that particular uh, scenario. So, but in the end, uh, that doesn't really work because when, if you then want to use that parameter, the thing goes falls apart. It doesn't work. So, don't hard code or concatenate strings that you want to be translated. Again, this is mo in all frameworks, so it will be very hard. You will have to redo the the job the work afterwards, and then. Since you, this is a, a JavaScript application, you, one of also the issues that you end up is that you, when you load the, the controls that you have, you sometimes what happens is that you end up loading all of the, this is a one page application, so you could end up loading all of the controls in the beginning. And so, but this is, a, 
has a lot of negative effects on performance. So you don't want to start the application and then wait 10 or 15 or 20 seconds because you're downloading the, the controls. So you should be very careful. So only, only call on the application manifest the controls that you really want. And if you do, if you do instantiate the, the controls, please use them. Don't instantiate them and then hide them. It doesn't make sense again. So uh, this is the, the, the web part. And uh, I don't know if anyone knows about uh, the Apache Cordova project. So Apache Cordova is basically a, um, an Apache project that enables you to build hybrid applications. Uh, so what's the history? This it was developed uh, as probably some, most of you are, uh, could know uh, for the PhoneGap project, which is an Adobe project. This was born by Nitobi. Uh, Adobe bought it in 2011, and then they donated the, the source code to, to the foundation. What this, uh, there, again, we have a lot of uh, companies using uh, the project. And what does this actually do? So what this does is that you can, you, you select a, a web framework, uh, and you can use OpenUI 5 or whatever. And then what this enables you is to just uh, embed the, the cre you create a container when you, where you embed a web view. So you develop the application in technolog technologies that you know. It's very easy to find developers that know HTML5, CSS, or and JavaScript, but it's not, may, especially if you have a small company, maybe it's not that easy to find uh, a developer that knows uh, Android development, and then w another, you have to find another one for iOS, uh, Firefox I OS. It's, it, ca it can be a mess. It sometimes is very difficult. And so this is a good approach if you are building some kinds of application that are not very perform performance heavy. So uh, you can you build you have the container and the key uh, value of Cordova is that you when you build a container the container uh, enables you to interact uh, with the native uh, um, functionalities of the devices and so you don't really know need to know how the, how the devices work. You don't need to know to develop Android or iOS. You develop for one, and it works for every single one of them. So these are some of the, the supported uh, OSs. Like I said, Android, BlackBerry, Firefox OS, which actually Firefox OS is basically develop, developing a on web. Uh, so again, what are the pros and cons? Uh, it enables you to use standard web technologies, which is good for, again, for everyone knows, basically. You just need to develop it once. No need to develop for multiple platforms. You can, uh, existing, Sometimes you can have an existing web app, and you you want, for example, you want to 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 put it on the Android uh, in in Google Play Store on or on uh, Apple Store, and so for for you to do that, you it's not possible if you're using a web app, but if you, you put it on a container on a card of a container, then you can so. If you already have apps working and you want to put it on the stores, this is a possible way to do it. As I said, it enables you to access native functionality of the devices via APIs, uh, which were 
what are the downsizes? So some of the of the functional native functionality may not be present. One of the examples is the calendar feature. It's not you can at this moment you cannot use the interact with the calendar if it's it's again it's an open source uh, project so if anyone wants to contribute it's nice some say it has a less rich ui than the than the native but since you are building on the web you can use whatever so uh, it's not as performant or performant as the a native application but again uh, if you have very good web developers maybe the application and not so good native developers uh, maybe the application won't work as differently as the the other one one of the other issues is that the, the plugins do vary in quality. So uh, between uh, devices and, for example, uh, there are some companies that do contribute a lot to Cordova. For example, uh, the plugins that uh, were done the, the for Android, uh, Google actually contributes a lot for those plugins. So they are really robust as well f as for for example, Firefox or or um, or Him, they also contribute. But Apple actually doesn't doesn't. So uh, the the um, the plugins are made from people like us that want to to contribute to the to the to the project. And so sometimes you do see some s weird stuff that works in one and it doesn't work exactly as you would, you would expect on another uh, platform. So how do you start? So you basically select the devices and the OS versions that you want. You have a, a command line client. You basically, you, the norm is that you would want to build a single page application, it's much easier. And then you just have to, you use the, the, the command line, you build the, the, the application for the targeted uh, OS and, or, and device, and basically that's it. It's very, actually pretty easy. And this is the, the, the framework. So again, you have the, the web application, it can be whatever framework that you choose. It renders, you use the HTML rendering engine of the application. For example, Android and iOS now share the same, so WebKit. And then you have the, the Cordova plugin. So the, you have a, an API that connects with the, which is common to all of them, which you develop in the a JavaScript that you connect with the Cordova plugins. And then f between the Cordova plugins and the OS plugins, you have different, uh, different connectors for each one of them, which you don't need to worry about. The, the, fr the Cordova framework manages everything, you just, you target the 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 OSs that you want, and then it does all by itself, which is the actually good thing about uh, the 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 framework. So this is I don't know if you can read. This is uh, some of the the OSs and the, the the all the plugins and the that are available for for each and some of them with the, some notes that some things that might not be working as expected. One of the things about this is that uh, a, a Cordova, Apache Cordova, the, the Apache Foundation is actually expecting that in the future uh, the projects will be 
it, it won't be necessary because with the evolution of uh, HTML5, there are a lot of functions that are, are already there. So the, the trend will be probably that HTML5 will be able to do this, uh, this uh, interaction with the native APIs of the, of the devices. Some of them are, are, are actually already working. So you can use HTML, HTML5 and connect with, the, uh, with, with your camera, for example. You don't need Cordova for this, but if you're using uh, accelerometers, if you're using contacts, it's actually nice to use a, a unified uh, framework. So this is the, if you are interested, this is the documentation of the project, some of the places you could go. Uh, for questions, uh, Stack Overflow works very nice. There's a, an active community. And uh, the documentation is actually also, also nice. If you're interested, it's very easy to build your, your first application. Uh, it's very, very, yeah. So basically that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to, to, to ask.